In this lesson, we are going to be looking at multiplying a fraction and a whole number. <clears throat> Before we get into multiplying a fraction by a whole number, we need to define certain fractions and their types and classifications. So, uh, first of all, we're looking at what is a proper fraction. Well, a proper fraction is a fraction that represents something uh, less than 1. In other words, the numerator, which is the top number in a fraction, is less than the denominator, which is the bottom number, because it represents a fraction less than 1. There's tons of examples that you could come up with. Uh, here's a couple of examples. Uh, one example could be like 3 quarters. That's a proper fraction because it's less than 1. It's 3 quarters of a whole. Or in other words, 2 fifths would be another proper fraction. You could come up with all sorts of proper fractions. So there's all examples. 3 quarters, 2 fifths, 1 third. Whereas an improper fraction is a fraction that represents more than a whole. So more than one whole. Uh, and it's ex the exact opposite of a proper fraction. So in other words, the numerator is greater than the denominator. So more than a whole, there, again, there's lots of possible examples. Four-thirds is more than one whole because it's four-thirds. It's more than three-thirds, which is one whole. Uh, another example would be five over two. Another example of an improper fraction, there's all sorts of them, is nine over four. So there's examples. Uh, a mixed number has relationship to an improper fraction. You actually saw that in the introduction to this chapter. A mixed number can be turned into an improper fraction and vice versa. So a mixed number is made up of a whole number and a proper fraction together. So it's a whole mixed with a proper fraction. So an example here could be uh, if you had one and two-thirds, you have one whole and then two-thirds of two parts of another uh, three. Another example would be three and one-quarter. That's a mixed number. Uh, next, product is essentially the answer to multiplication. You'll have lots of questions uh, throughout your mathematics where you're asked about the product of two things. So just know that what you're doing with those two things is multiplying. So for example, the product of 2 and 3 is 6 because 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, the word of. If the word of is, uh, comes up in a lot of your work throughout um, math, it generally means multiply. So it usually means multiply seems a little bit weird. So I have, if I asked you what is a half of 3, you would actually do the operation of 1 half times 3. Uh, that would be what you'd be doing. And the last thing is something called the commutative property. The commutative property applies to multiplication. And what that's saying, again, you don't have to write down this part, but it's saying that 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3. You're more than welcome in multiplication to change the order. The order doesn't matter. So that's a commutative property, which is not true for some other operations. But for multiplication, you can change the order, and you will get the same result, which is helpful in some cases throughout this assignment. So the commutative property says that the product, so if you multiply two numbers, the product of two numbers is the same in either order. So 2 times 3 is equivalent to 3 times 2. 4 times 5 is equivalent to 5 times 4. Okay, so the next part of this uh, lesson is looking specifically at how we multiply a fraction and a whole number. So one way to do, or to multiply a fraction and a whole number, is to look at fraction strips. So if you look here, if we're doing 3 times 5, 6, uh, that is repeated addition. You have learned previously in mathematics that multiplication is the same as repeated addition. So 3 times 5, 6 is the same as three groups of 5, 6, so it's the same as 5, 6, plus 5, 6, plus 5, 6. So if you need to look at the diagram of this, here's what it would look like. So we could shade in. So here's I'm, what I'm doing. First of all is breaking these all up into six parts because the denominator is how many parts to break each hole into. And then I'm going to take my highlighter. So 3 times 5, 6 can look like this. Here's 5, 6, shaded in 5 out of 6 parts. 
here's another 5 sixths, and here's another 5 sixths. So if you add those all up, how many 1 sixths are shaded in, you'll notice that there's 5 plus 5 plus 5 sixths, which is a total of 15 sixths. So the denominator doesn't change. These portions are all still sixths. And we can just shade in the first 15 sixths. So 5 sixths plus 5 sixths plus 5 sixths is, well, here's 6 sixths. Here's another 6 sixths. So I've shaded in 12 sixths. And 13, 14, 15 sixths. So that's your answer. So 5 sixths plus 5 sixths plus 5 sixths is 15 sixths. So your answer here is equivalent to 15 sixths. You could reduce that. 3 goes into 15 and 6, so you get 5 over 2. And if you'd like to make it into a mixed number, you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to leave it as 5 halves as my reduced answer. A second method, so beyond using diagrams to understand multiplying a whole number by a proper fraction, you can use a rule. And the rule that we've learned is, and you might want to think about how it relates to this 15 over 6, is we notice that all we have to do is multiply the whole number by the numerator and leave the denominator alone because we have three groups of five sixths. So we're going to multiply these two here, okay? And that becomes 15 sixths. And then we can also reduce it like we did on the previous question. And what you'll notice here is we have an answer of five halves. And if you'd like to make it into a mixed number, that's also two and a half. Okay, so you can see that's the same answer. So the final key idea here that you can write into your notes is that we should always represent our answer in lowest terms.